beautiful introduction, beautiful introduction, and uh, welcome, darlings. So I'd like to start this conversation with first giving kind of a definition to the term karmic relationships, because for a long time, I personally looked at karmic relationships as something to avoid, something to avoid, something to run to the other end of the street or something to even carry a little bit of shame around, you know, like, oh my gosh, here I am in a karmic relationship again, right? Or guilt. I can't believe I have chosen the same type of a relationship just with a different face, right? So, so in the past, my perspective of karmic relationship, you know, had a little bit of that heavy and almost, almost negative connotations, right? Until I came to this realization um, and, the, you know, really receiving a fresh perspective of karmic relationships as a way for us to reboot the stubborn patterns that we are not able to see on our own. So karmic relationships can be defined by the intensity of pull of another person towards you. You know, it's something that you you may find yourself saying, oh my gosh, I've known you before. It's like I've known you from a past life something. So usually karmic relationships, they have a few components in common. There's a strong sense of familiarity, like, oh, here we are again. Like, like you, you know, you, you, you're picking up somewhere that you've left off, right? There's this very strong sexual attraction in a karmic relationship. This is why usually it's a very fiery dynamic. You know, there is a lot of shakti, a lot of sexual fire, right? And, uh, and they usually, they usually start out, you know, with the feeling like, wow, this is the person that I've been looking for. Wow, this is the relationship that I've been looking for. And it's very easy to begin to like imagining the, the future happy life together (laughs) in a matter of weeks. And, you know, you find yourself spending hours on the phone if it's a long distance relationship or on Zoom, or if it's somebody in your neighborhood, you know, maybe you begin to spend every day with that person or every night. And it's a very rapidly progressive relationship. So let me know in the the comments if you ever experience. It's very intense. It's, It's rooted in deep sexual chemistry and passion, right? And it's a huge sense of familiarity. So all that to said, they are rooted in usually karmic relationships. They are driven by karma. And let's break down the word karma. Karma is, you know, many people have different perspectives on that. But the the perspective that I bring, karma is basically the law of cause and effect. So usually we incarnate for many reasons on the, on the plane, because we have desire to experience this life of being human and being divine. We also are driven to complete um, some part of our bigger life destiny that we have not completed in the past. And we also incarnate because of karma. You know, there are certain karmic debts that we we are bound to repay. And a lot of those karmic debts from our lineage or from our family line or or between us and another person. So karmic relationships come to us because there are soul contracts for us and another person, right? But here's here's where a lot of people get trapped and never evolve a karmic relationship to something so much of a higher frequency. They get stuck in the loop and they keep repeating the same uh, reactive, um, reactive choices in those karmic relationships. Instead, instead of seeing what the karmic relationship is helping you here to unravel, to learn, to evolve, and then you either 
evolve the dynamic to a much higher frequency sacred union relationship or you learn everything you're there to learn and you can allow the natural completion of that relationship to take course so all of that to say darlings karmic relationships as i see it and i have no attachment if you agree with me or disagree with me uh, in fact, don't take everything I say as truth. Verify it with the feeling that you feel in your body and also with the truth of your experience. I'm here to plant seeds and to share the truth of my experience, right? So what I see, what I begin to track in my own life is that we attract what we have not resolved yet. So by the grace of the divine, these karmic relationships are sent to us, right? Through the grace of synchronicity and the gift of the higher forces to help us see what we are not able to see on our own. So, so you know, the, the power of attraction, right? Think about this way. We have very little control who comes into our life when they come into our life and how the relationship will go. I mean, what, what's the final outcome of the relationship, right? Are they going to be the soul friend after the romance took its turn? Are they going to be our business partner or are they going to be our life partner? We really have very little control over that. You know, when it comes to the matters of love, we can practice, you know, uh, from my perspective, we can bring, you know, the gift of our presence and the power of our own, you know, alchemy, and then surrender to this higher plan or the higher wisdom that brought us together with a particular person. So the karmic relationship, I know it's a really, really big theme. I'm offering to you that because next year, year 2022, it's going to be the whole theme of the year is the is how do we relate right how do we relate romantically as a as a two of cups this is a i brought a whole i brought a whole uh collection of tarot cards how do we re relate romantically you know are we able to relate from the place of wholeness from the place of deep emotional maturity, from the place of sacred innocence, not naivete, sacred innocence and wholeness. Are we able to relate this way? So if we desire that ultimate ideal of the sacred union, you know, a true union with your divine match, with your true equal, karmic relationships are here to prepare you and me for this union for the union that feels aligned, for the union that feels like your true home, for the union that feels like, wow, I am here and I am fully met and I have a capacity to fully meet another person in a sacred union. So this is what I see it's happening. You know, it's a normal human desire to long for the beloved. It's encoded in our DNA. It's imprinted in our soul. From the moment we become aware of the power of eros, we begin to search, we begin to long, we begin to cry out for our true beloved. But the fear, the fear of our heart to be broken again and again, and where we are left in the shambles of illusion, we're left in isolation. This is what prevents us from opening to that sacred union right and you know i have this picture of the masculine and the feminine and i just want to say this is not the ideal that is universal ideal this is a this is the principle of the feminine and the masculine right this could be in the same sex couples this can be in um, in the in the opposite sex couples, right? This is all across the board. Uh, we we redefine the dynamic between the masculine and the feminine in a whole new way. 
So this, I want, I want to make sure that we're clear on that. But this is something, this is really powerful. We have this archetypal longing to be met fully by our true beloved. And what karmic relationships do, they come in with their intensity and they help us become aware of what we are not aware just yet in terms of blockages within us that prevent the union, right? That prevent this union, that that create inharmonious vibration, that stand in a way of a full resonance. Because when you are in full resonance to the sacred union, when it's time for you to stand in the alchemy of the sacred union, it's going to happen like this. But until your field is clear enough, right, and coherent enough, you will continue to attract what feels and looks and is karmic relationships, right? So how do we become aware of how do we elevate that karmic dynamic, right? How do we become aware? How do we become, how do we become responsible and mature individuals? So we stop this, this very mm, limiting game of blaming another person for the lack of fulfillment in our relationships. Because the moment we begin to blame another, we lose our freedom, right? I'm gonna pause here because it's been, <laughs> we went deep, but you know, but you know, we went deep loves, but I hope by now you can count on depth with me. <laughs> you can count on depth with me because beloved, the, the, the possibility of what is possible, what is possible when we become resonant to the true sacred union, you know what's really possible is the beauty of the sacred marriage, of the sacred couple. Only in your wholeness can we magnetize another wholeness. So karmic relationships come into our life to help us see where we still give our power away, where we still seek fulfillment and another, where we still are fragmented aspects of our consciousness, those wounded aspects of our consciousness are not whole. That is the gift. That is the magic of karmic relationships. So this perspective really opened my eyes on the sacredness of arrows when it comes. And, you know, I don't know about you, but at this age of my life and this stage of my evolution, I'm 45, oh, 45, <laughs> I'm 41 years young. And I have been loved by extraordinary men. And I have loved deeply in a very profound way that sometimes left me here, shattered, Right on my knees, praying for a miracle, praying for uh, my, my, my heart to heal. I also found myself here, guarding my heart, you know, and just saying, I, 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 I can't go through this again, right? But what I found lately more and more is this experience, learning to love like a divine fool, learning to let go into the alchemy of relationship without insistence of guarantee, without fear that I am not able to meet any outcome with dignity, with innocence, with open-hearted awareness. So this is what all of my relationships have been teaching me lately, beloveds, to bring the archetype of the fool. This is the number one card in the tarot deck. And the tarot is a code book of consciousness. It's a universal set of symbols that literally describes the stages of consciousness evolution. So this is the first one, right? When we come, when we begin to seek a higher truth and begin to seek to know who we are and the meaning of our relationships, we are being invited to be like a fool, right? A fool that is innocent, a fool that says, no matter how many times my heart was broken, I will not be jaded. I will be willing 
to open my heart again and to trust and to take a leap because I know the jewel of the relationship is the wisdom of experience that comes with them. So, um, and then there's going to be chapters of isolation, right? This is the, uh, the fifth card of Taro, Hierophant, where you will be required and I will be required to travel our paths solo to activate that inner mystic, to really do our inner work in solitude. And where no matter how hard your, your uh, mind will say, well, hey, go on the dating sites, meet some people, hire a matchmaker. Your chapter is not about that. Your chapter is to be with your inner mystic or your inner priestess, right? To activate that that wholeness on your own but that chapter is temporary and what i a lot of times i see in myself as a very solitary creature you know i'm like a cat i'm very 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 content to be by myself so the danger of this is overstaying this chapter and when you begin to value your solitary time or your solitary existence as almost like superior element as something superior than your ability to relate to others. So that's something that I see in myself, loves. And if you relate, you will know what, if, if, you, if you find yourself there, then, you know, look at this blissful mystic. Look at this blissful <laughs> sage. He's like probably doing some breath work, chanting, oh, you know, totally happy on his own. And it's a chapter. It's a sacred chapter. But this is not how we designed to be forever. Otherwise, why would we incarnate on this planet Earth where it's all about relationships? So when this chapter comes to conclude con completion, you will know. You will know life will move you into a chapter of we. So this the, the awakening of the mystic is usually a chapter of I. And this is a chapter of we. And the chapter of we is where you learn the sacred art of interdependence. So what's happening in the world, in the world, as I see it, right, as a, as, as a somebody who is a seer, who has been cultivating my prophetic sight, my ability to see between dimensions, multidimensional. This is what I see, beloved, that if we keep holding on to the identity of a lonely wolf, we are going to have a very, very, very difficult time moving forward. We need each other. And I'm going to use this word need, not from a needy place, not from a codependent place, but from a place of this humble objective realization that we are moving into the age of we where we begin to realize the beauty of interdependence, where we combine our resources with another, we actually gonna go further. Whether it's our material resources, whether it's our networks, we combine our networks together, we combine our skills together, we, are go we, we will be able to go so much further when we allow the magic of interdependence and that magic will trigger some of our shadows, 100%, 100%. And learning to work through the shadows, right? If, you, if, you, if you've been a hermit for many years and you'll be invited by life to learn how to live together with others, how to work together with others, your stuff will come up at a much faster way. And this is where the shadow work is non-negotiable. The shadow work that you've been learning in your solitary chapter gets tested in your relationships, right? Just reading about the shadow work and the shadow patterns in the nice, lovely spiritual books, it's one level. Life will send you karmic relationships to test your embodiment. But we can look at the karmic relationships from the place of, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm here again. Or, wow, I am here again. 
here's another very honest mirror. This divine being that looks like where's the face of my father or the face of my mother or the face of my previous lover, they are sent to me literally by the spirit of grace. They are the most beautiful mirror. I finally see that it's not about them. There is something in me. There is a mechanism in me that pulls a specific type of a relationship that helps me see again and again what I am not resolved yet. So I am here again. I got to become curious about the patterns within me that are a match to this relationship. I'm going to become so curious. And this is why, beloveds, I'm a big champion of the Gene Keys, right? Let's pull the book. The book is always next to me. Why I promote this wisdom out of so many wisdom traditions that are available. This is the most, I would say, a very practical, rooted in divine feminine language transmission. And the Venus sequence, which is probably the, 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 the deepest essence of these teachings, is to help you and I to become aware the map of our emotional wounds. Why do we think it's so much easier to, uh, to have a harmonious relationship with your friend long term, your soul friend, than with your romantic partner? Because your soul friend will not trigger your core wounds. Your romantic partner, the moment the honeymoon season is over, they begin to trigger your deepest wounds, your deepest sense of inadequacy, your deepest shadow patterns come up. So you can walk this path in the dark, experience after experience, relationship after relationship, or you can become this you know, devoted student of the map of your emotional world. And this is what Venus sequence gives to us. In fact, this is the reason why I teach Jinkies workshops. And the Venus sequence is the second sequence is, is the path of awakening your ability to relate in a very authentic way, in a way that, you know, that, that is rooted in authenticity, in a warm hearted connectedness, right? So, in a couple of weeks, I'll be teaching um, a three-day workshops online available to all my international community. So we don't have the travel restrictions, right? If some of you wanted to be at my in-person event and couldn't travel because of travel restrictions, I really felt called to offer a virtual experience and to offer it in, the, in the such accessible way that if you truly desire to be there, the, the financial investment is so affordable to spend three days studying the maps of your consciousness, not only what activates your true soul gifts that are embedded in you, that give you opportunity to create your own sovereignty based on your unique genius, but also to become aware of your defense patterns that have been built in the first 21 years of your life because the core wounds, that they all go back to the childhood, right? So knowing your unique patterns of shutting down your heart, how valuable it is because the next karmic relationship that comes your way, you're going to see your patterns in such new light. You're going to see the way you constrict, the way you withhold love, the way you uh, put blame on another. And when I say you, it's we, right? It's I, I go through the same thing, loves, through the same things. So if you'd like to be a part of that experience, you can see the link either underneath this video or if you look at all of my, any of my social media, Facebook, Instagram, it's there. It's on my wall and you can join. The early bird special is still happening. So I also would like to address this topic because, you know, the number one thing that I have when friends come to me, especially my male friends, I have a lot of soul friends who are men. 
I have incredible sisterhood connection with my beloved sisters, but I also have very good male friends. And you know, the number one thing that they come to me for support in the time of their crisis, because they trust me, you know, they trust me that I'm not going to judge them. And I'm going to hear, I'm going to listen to them, and I'm going to offer objective wisdom. The number one uh, thing that they come to me for is when they find themselves in karmic relationships. And they can't get out because the chemistry is so strong and the sex is so good. Probably the best they've ever had. And they can't get out. And they make these loops, loop after loop, loop after loop. And and here's another six months and they're still in the same dynamic. And none of it is wrong, beloveds. None of that are wrong because the karmic relationships will run its course however long it needs for us to become aware that we are the ones who are choosing the same relationship where we don't feel mad where our needs are not being honored, where our vibration drops, where we're not moving forward, right? We are the ones who continue to say yes to it. So intellectually, you may begin to see it, but you're so hooked on sexual pheromones. It's a biological chemical addiction to another person's pheromones. So the first advice that I give to my male friends that they usually do not follow right away. And how can you blame them, right? Because sex is so, feels so good. I tell them, stop having sex with this person and reclaim your clarity. When you are in a sexual fog, right? That feels so good when you are in the moment of that passion. You know, there's, there is a reason why people say, you know, makeup sex is so good, of course. It's a chemical stimulated adrenaline rush. But what happens, you don't have the capacity to see a situation clearly. You're blinded by lust and you're blinded by chemistry and you're blinded by biological addiction of your pheromones. It goes even deep with women. This is why I don't believe in casual sex. There's nothing casual about sex. When we have sex, we receive a soul of another. We receive another person's soul in a very literal way. So what happens biologically on the women's, uh, for women, we bond super fast. The moment we have a sexual experience with another human being and exchange pheromones and fluids of the body, we are hooked like this. You know, to me, it only happened a couple of times, maybe like, because, you know, darlings, I, I've done it all. I had a wild chapter in my life when I was healing after divorce. I've had plenty of one, one night stands where I tried to have sex without feelings and just go for the physical experience. And I think like that's the only time I didn't bond to another because I wouldn't allow myself to feel and to bond. But the moment I would see somebody's soul and then would have sex with them, Biology would take over and I would bond so deeply to another person and I couldn't see clearly, you know, that their relationship was deeply karmic and I, and I could make very, very different choices to, to, to show up in that relationship differently. Right. So I'm just sharing the gold of 20 years of my personal experience, you know, like if I had a daughter, Um, I will have plenty of nieces and nephews. So I'm excited for my nieces and nephews to have this conversation together, you know, but, but if I had a daughter, uh, like my own biological child, this is, this is the conversation that I would have with my daughter, you know, of the, we cannot underestimate the power of biology and the power of real chemical addiction that happens when our pheromones get hooked. And then you cannot see clearly. This is why people stay in the relationships that are, you know, that are deeply dysfunctional. I'm going to say that. Because another thing to be in a karmic relationship with full awareness, you realize, wow, this relationship is here to help me heal a pattern. A pattern with my daddy, a pattern with my mommy, right? That's what it is. The last couple of relationships that I've had, that I've had, it was all about healing my relationship with my dad. 
it was so clear the moment I stopped having sex with them and unhooked my nervous system and my biology from that addiction to their pheromones, I, I, it was like a cold sweat clarity. Wow, I am repeating relationship with my dad right here. But now that I see it, I can make a new choice and break a whole generational uh, karmic pattern. So how do we evolve for karmic relationships? We make new choice. We make new choice. We make new choice, beloveds. And we make new choice, not from the place of reactivity. Like, I'm going to show you what's possible. I'm going to push you away, right? That's not making a new choice. You break the karmic pattern and you evolve it into a new way of living where you choose or make a choice based on self-love, sense of worthiness, and deep sense of honesty, where you take 100% responsibility for your part in being a magnet to that relationship. You get to know your wound mechanisms. You get to know your defense patterns. And you begin this courageous journey right, of loving yourself so deeply and, and, and communicating in a new way. Because usually, you know, this is the, the challenge that I see a lot in myself and, and others is, uh, is fear to communicate authentically, you know. And you, you begin to see that every karmic relationship is here to help you learn to communicate in a very mature, compassionate, and loving way. When I hear some people communicate with each other, I am, I am just in horror, you know? I'm horrified when I see what happens between people and they call it communication. It's like a gladiator battlefield, right? With emotional daggers and accusations and blame and, and that's communication. That is heartbreaking to witness. So every karmic relationship comes to us to give us another chance to learn to communicate in the spirit of gentleness, spirit of love, and the spirit of compassion. And no, it's not about getting it perfect, but it's about be, being willing to do it with more gentleness next time. It's, it's, do, it's about being willing to hire a coach if, it, if that's what is required for you. And to process your traumas, to hire a therapist and to process your traumas and to look at it as a, this is a lifelong curriculum because, beloved, we all long for this. All of us long for the sacred union where we feel seen, fully met, where we can really build a union that lasts. But for that to happen, we get to do the sacred work of emotional alchemy, the sacred work of opening our heart into wholeness, the sacred work of becoming emotional alchemists. And that is not easy, not always easy, until you begin to fall in love with the process, I, I, until you begin to value the authentic relating so much deeper than a fake relating that rooted on a border. You give me that, I give you this, right? Or I'm going to rescue here and carry you on my shoulders because that's what mommy did. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm, I'm gonna look for another fixer-up project in my relationship because that's what daddy did. When you are tired of this, your heart being broken, your illusions being broken, your hope has been broken, and you begin to long for this, then you will dive into the deep, deep, deep journey of emotional alchemy. Whatever we see in the world, beloveds, this is just my perspective, of course. I know I am a totally in transmission stage right now. So um, I'm just going to check to make sure that we're still going. We are still going. <laughs> 
39 minutes. Hello. Let me know if you're still with me. Let me know in the comments if you're still with me below. It's because, you know, I see the word world archetypally. I see the world through the mythic lens, right? To me, I look at the collective as, as the soul of the world that is moving through healing. And in order for us to heal the soul of the world, which we are cells, individual cells and in part of the soul of the world, it's for us to learn to be together again in a very sovereign, interdependent, loving, connected way without fear that our heart will be broken. You know, it's, it's, it's a wholeness meeting another wholeness. Only then we'll be able to have a relationship that is not half empty or half full. It's an overflowing cup. It's an overflowing cup where we are met equally. Imagine what we can build from that. So I foresee a lot of relationships coming to completion uh, this year. And also in the beginning of next year, the ones who are not a vibrational match. If you find yourself in a relationship that is approaching its natural completion, and how do you know you are at peace? You are at a place of neutrality. If you find yourself boomeranging to the same relationship over and over again, you're not complete. You're running away from probably the most difficult lesson, right? So stay if you don't feel the lesson is complete yet. Because, you know, if you leave abruptly, you're just going to find it in another relationship. So how to know you're complete? It's peace. It's tranquility. It's neutrality. There is, no blame. there is not an ounce of blame in you. This is a big, big thing. You know, when people say, uh, I see protests and I see all these speeches about our freedoms being taken away. And I see people take away their own freedoms every day. You know how? By blaming others. Whenever we blame or complain, we take away our own freedom. We allow the blame is like, imagine like the blame is like a hook. Here's another perspective. You know, I, I remember I did a lot of these karmic clearings and helping people remove hooks from their energy field. But my lack of experience at that time, you know, this is something that you learn as a healer, just removing hooks from people's energy body is, is rarely effective unless you teach them how not to put the hooks back in. And every time we blame, we put a hook in our energy field. Every time you blame your ex, you recreate a codependency pattern every single time. You blame your parent. You put a hook into your energy field that keeps that connection going. You know, this is why um, when I was releasing uh, some of my previous relationships and I, every time I would think about that person, I taught myself to say thank you. The, the memory comes up from my DNA, right? And I say, thank you. Thank you for teaching me this. Thank you for teaching me that, right? Because the ego wants to blame. Oh, you you did this to me and you've done this to me and I don't deserve this and you're wrong and I am so innocent and so pure. How this happens to me? You keep the hooks in. You're never free. The moment you begin to release and to say thank you to every experience, it doesn't mean stay in an abusive relationship. It doesn't mean that. You know, use the common sense to get out of abusive relationship if you find yourself in any kind of abusive environment. Common sense, right? What I'm talking about is giving ourselves our freedom back by letting go of the blame or guilt that's what keeps the victim consciousness intact. Blame or guilt. Read Jinky 55 if you want to go deeper. True freedom is unshackling yourself. Unshackling yourself from blame or guilt. 
becoming so committed to tracking every time you complain, even if it's in your mind. You complain, boom, you lost your freedom. You blame, boom, you lost your freedom. You're not free anymore. So how do we become free? By realizing nobody can take away our freedom. Only we have that power. And instead of blaming or complaining, saying, how can I see the lesson? What is here for me to learn? What is here for me to receive? Yeah, this is the alchemy, beloveds. And what's going to help is take a pause. You notice a blaming thought? That's part of the victory. You notice it. Instead of being run by it, right? Like that voice. Da, 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 da. You caught it. You caught it. That's a part of the victory. So a pause is the part of the alchemy. I know. <laughs> you still with me? Are you still with me? Let me know in the comments what resonates with you the most. So from the primal pain to cascade of openness. So the primal pain, beloveds, and Jinky teaches that in your chart, based on your astrological data, you can see the core primal pattern of constriction that you took on from your family lineage. And that is the core pattern that will show up in all of your relationships, but especially in romantic relationships, right? So to see that, once you see, you cannot unsee, you can make a new choice because the cascade of openness is the reward or the flowering of awakened heart. Let's go, let's let go of the word reward. This is, life is not a competition. Life is an adventure of consciousness. So I would like to use the word flowering. When you stop avoiding the primal pain that you carry, the primal defense pattern against true love, the flowering of your consciousness, the flowering of your heart is the cascade of openness cascade of intimacy cascade of vulnerability that's what waits for us when we do this courageous work of inner alchemy we become incredibly brave in the journey of healing our own hearts and unthawing the ice around our hearts right and we, we begin to say i am so willing to bring my heart back to life because I know it's my birthright to experience the sacred union level love. And it begins with me. It begins with me and only with me. The great prophecy, beloved, is this, um, the sacred marriage, you know, where two awakened people come together. And they receive a mutual enlightenment, right? This is the prophecy that came through the jinkies that Richard Grodd brought to us, Jinky 55. And when I read it, my entire body just, just got filled with so much truth and joy and divine bliss because, you know, this is my personal next stage is, is the family. You know, I'm in the stage of my life that I'm not, I'm, I'm done with dating. I I've have left a very experiential life, let's just say. You know, there is no fantasy left unturned in my life. Maybe there is a couple. <laughs> Maybe there is a couple that I would like to experience with my sacred husband. Right? But let's just say, you know, the trajectory that I am on is the sacred marriage, is a truly anchoring that sacred union uh, with another awakened consciousness who stands fully in his sovereignty, fullness, and wholeness. And for that, every karmic relationship that is given to me, sometimes they're so short, you know, I just went through a couple of them that were only two months long. One was two months, another one once, once. They don't need to be long. If you know your own patterns and what is the sacred mirror of relationship brings to you, these relationships becomes very short. 
they are cleansing mechanisms. They help you cleanse. They help you see clearly your patterns, right? And once the cleansing process is complete, shoo, they're out of your life. They're out of your, they're out of your hologram, right? One way or another, they dissolve and take a new form. They maybe become your friends. Maybe they become perfect strangers, right? But it's, it's all part of the mechanism, the karmic relationships are here to help you see what you haven't resolved yet and what stands in a way for you to truly activate the inner, the sacred union within. Okay, I'm going to pause here because I've been talking for almost an hour and I want to see your comments, loves. How are you? Ooh, I, now I see you, darlings. I see the comments and uh, woo, what a gorgeous ladies here with me. I see my ladies are here with me. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for all these hearts. I see you, darlings. I see you. And I just wanted to, since all my women are here with me and the feminine is literally, we are the pioneers of this work, beloved. Women are so resilient. We're so resilient in the matters of the heart. No matter how many times, no matter how many times we find ourselves in that you know, moment where the dream of the union dissolves and takes another form and we're being asked to trust even that. The level of resilience of a feminine soul, I am in awe. I'm in awe. This is why it's so powerful for us to have sisterhood, that we give these topics a voice, you know, that it's uh, the karmic relationships come to us and, and it prepares us, it prepares us for that ultimate sacred union. So this is what, you know, I'm here to share with you, my loves. It is, it is all sacred. It is all holy. And it is, you know, when it's here, you can trust it, right? Like if you can, if you're willing to see these relationships as the alchemical cauldron to help you purify the patterns, to help you relate in a completely different way. You know, darlings, in my last relationship, I was so inspired by how I showed up. And I want to give this a voice because rarely as women, we give ourselves credits. We, I often notice that as women, we often it's so much easier for us to take a bigger blame, right? And I am here to inspire you, to give yourself a ton of acknowledgement. You know, I sat down with my inner child and I said, honey, I'm so proud of how we showed up in this relationship. I'm so proud that this time you and I, we spoke about our needs from the place of deep authenticity and courage and vulnerability. I'm so proud that this time we did not, we did not escape. And uh, I'm so proud of us. This was, this was a brave experience for you. And I talked to my inner child like this after a relationship dissolved, right? And I say, I'm inspired how we should showed up. Wow. I am becoming my, my dream partner. I am becoming her. I am her. And you know, uh, the two days ago, three days ago, loves, it just dropped in, you know, this anchoring that I am the woman that I've always wanted to become. And when, when that happened, I just, it was such a beautiful, you know, not from this egoic place, right. But from a place of your ability to truly see yourself, and all that you bring and how you are more than enough. You know, you are so enough and you don't need to come out of your skin anymore to prove it. You begin to trust your ability to recognize a partner who also came to a realization that they are the partner that they always wanted to become. And boom, that's the moment. That's the moment, right, loves? So I just wanted to share that with you because it's so powerful. And I wanted to share this, this transmission because, you know, I am currently, I'm currently living with the man. <laughs> I did not know that that's going to come through. 
but I'm actually, um, I'm actually around a very safe and consistent, loving masculine who demonstrated to me what it feels like to be around a heavy, healthy masculine on a consistent basis. You know, I actually, um, it, it came together, you know, I am in my beautiful new home, as you see me filming, but this home came together because I was willing to consider to share my space with a friend of mine, you know, and, and uh, we both were looking for a home for a long time and I've lived on my own for 10 years. And, uh, and you know, it was his idea. It's like, Katarina, are you open? You know, if you get the, the house of your dreams and I can rent a room from you and we can both have separate existence, you know, we have separate entrances and all of that. But, you know, it's like, I am, I am, I am in town. I am in the, I travel a lot. I'm in town, you know, five months out of the year. Would you consider this? And, you know, loves, it was such a powerful experience for me because I'm very particular about my space. I'm highly sensitive to other people's vibrations and, you know, that affects my creativity and all of that. But this was so divinely guided because I know this person for almost 10 years. We are very, very good friends, soul friends. There is a deep, clean clarity between us. There is no hidden agendas or nothing like that. And, um, and we're both trauma-informed. We both have deep trainings in trauma. We both have a vast communication toolbox. And we both practice authentic relating. And I saw this as life has invited me to exit my hermit stage and to practice the art of interdependence and to practice the art of living with someone who is consistent, who is healthy, who is safe, who is embodied divine masculine, that I can see this template not only at retreats or um, you know, on social media or through my friends, but as a living template day after day after day so it's been really powerful you know i am sharing this to you with you because i speak from experience and trust me some of my stuff came up because you know <laughs> you, you you share the space with somebody and no matter how aware and how attuned they are to you you know if you are more introverted sometimes uh, it will it will bring up a few things but to me, this has been such a profound, accelerated growth and a huge transformation cauldron, right? To see, okay, I'm being prepared for my sacred union. I'm being prepared for that sacred marriage that I desire so deeply. And this is a transition stage, right? So this is what I see as a seer, beloved, collectively, if we if we want to thrive next year, we'll be invited to look at our relationships in a very, very new way. We are being invited to combine our resources with those who are aligned for us, you know, and uh, and learn the art of partnerships, learn the art of collaborations, because this is the new paradigm. This is the new age. It's not even the paradigm. We are going from the age of I to the age of we. And how do we, how can we do that, right? If we hold on to the identity of the lonely wolf. And I see a lot of men go through that. You know, a lot of men find their brotherhood, their men's movements, and they, they rise up, you know, to meet us, the feminine. The feminine is the pioneer of the movement, right? So the men rise up to meet the feminine, they do their own inner work and the healing of their wounds, but ultimately what will create the sacred union activation within us is the healing of the split between the masculine and the feminine, between the yin and the yang. And for us to learn to see how we are complementary strengths, we're not opposing, we're complementary, right? So on that note, Bilal, I know I've been going on for a long time. It's a long time and it's a filming day. So I'm going to do quite a lot of filming today after I take a little break and do some breath work. It was so good to be with you. I know it's been a deep dive transmission. If you're going to listen to this audio on my podcast, because I'll put, I'll put this audio on the podcast so it's easier to listen to it again. 
this was a very mm, uh, <laughs> content thick transmission. And uh, I'm just so grateful to share with you these insights. You know, this is how we grow together by sharing what we're learning. And, um, and I continue to create these containers of transformation and accelerated growth. The one that is coming up is going to be November 11, 12, and 13. And it's going to be an immersion, darlings. It's a virtual immersion that I teach on the Gene Keys. People have been asking me literally for two years, Katarina, bring it online so we can attend. And uh, you can learn from many different ways. Some people like to go slow and study Gene Keys over several months. I am an intense person. <laughs> I think... You can see that. And also a playful person. I like to bring intensity of learning experience or where we go really high hawk view over entire body of work. And then we're going to dive into specific themes, right? That are super important to activate. So I wanted to bring this experience over three days, right? Where you are in my virtual classroom for three days uh, from 9 a.m. until noon. And then we have a bonus Q&A where, you know, if you want me to look at your chart, this is your opportunity. You know, you can volunteer and you say, Katarina, I would love for you to see my chart. And we can do these deep dive, precise analysis of your chart. And I'm going to teach this training on two levels. I'm going to teach it for anybody who would like to understand themselves deeper. And also, how to understand their clients and the people that you work with deeper. It, Gene Keys is the number one tool that I use. You know, I just, I just welcomed a new client for immersion work with me for like a virtual deep dive intensive. And the first thing I give my assistant as a task is please run this person Gene Keys because this gives me so much information. If I only have a day to spend with a person to help them see their business in the new light, their message in the new light, how their unique gifts, the number one tool that gives me the precision of insight into their soul map is the Gene Keys. So I don't know any more valuable tool, beloveds. And um, so I wanted to share that with you. Yes, if you can attend all sessions live, there will be replays available at the same day. And you can have that asset as a course, because then I will put all of those recordings into a course that you can access anytime. But I'm going to teach it live virtually once this year. And I don't know when I'm going to teach it live again virtually, because my teaching schedule is very full. So if you always wanted to study with me, don't miss out. You know, don't miss out. Don't let the voice of the da 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 hold you back. Join us. It's going to be, a, 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 um, how would I call it? It's going to be an exciting group. I think I have uh, 30 people already in it. So it's going to be an exciting group. You're going to meet your kindred spirits. It's going to be a live energizing experience. So I hope you join us and how to find where to sign up. Just look at my wall on Facebook, on Instagram, and you will see uh, my post about it. I love you. Thank you so much for joining this. And um, I have been growing my community on Instagram. If you and I are not connected on Instagram, please follow me there. My All my social media platforms are very easy to find. They all are called Katarina Satori. So I am on Instagram, very active. I'm on YouTube, very active now. And I'm on Facebook. So it would be a joy to connect with you and I love you. And I've also, of course, my, I have my website, katarinasatori.com, where you can sign up for my uh, musings and channelings and monthly audios that I send out only to my email subscribers. On this note, beloveds, hmm, only in your wholeness, you can magnetize another wholeness. So all karmic relationships are doing to help you arise in your wholeness. On that note, honor them and sacred as a sacred gift that they are. And uh, choose every, every new choice elevates what you attract. So choose wisely. And I love you so much. 
And thank you so much for being here with me. And of course, if you found the value in this video, you always have encouragement and uh, permission to share this video with your community. I love you and I will see you soon. Thank you.